Hello and welcome to this edition of Facebook Live with me, your host, Ann Bray Smith, and my beautiful co-host here, Miss Shanthony, aka Snow White Bray. I am so excited that she decided to join with me tonight. Uh, my primary co-host, Miss Malaya, is taking care of some much needed education academic stuff there online. And tonight we're talking about five ways to take control of your mind. Five practical ways you can take control of your mind. It's all about the mind uh, for the remainder of this week. Because we know if we listen to the broadcast last night that our actions follow our thoughts. So if we're thinking it and our actions are following. So that brings us here tonight. So if you're with me, go ahead and like and share this video so that others on your timeline can uh, enjoy the video as well. I appreciate you once again. Uh, taking and sacrificing your time to uh, join with us after 10 o'clock at night. I know it's bedtime for most of us. My family is in town and I am just excited. I am delighted. So if you hear a little something in the background, that is my family and I'm just delighted that they're here. While you're liking and sharing this video and inviting your friends and calling them up and letting them know we're here tonight, if you can see, I have my shirt. It's not over until I win. That is a quote that I just stand on and, and keep motivating myself with by my motivational mentor, Mr. Les Brown. So if you're not familiar with Les Brown, get familiar with Les Brown. If you know a little something about Les Brown, go ahead and leave it in the comments at this time. Things we're talking about, it's just a spinoff of my book that I written in June of 2019, Recreating a Better Me. Reconstructing Thoughts is in chapter three. But for those that may not read or be familiar with this book, it's also in audio form. So if you go to Amazon or Audible, you'll be able to find that book there. And what an awesome Thing technology is for us today. All right. I think I've given you enough time. Go ahead and make sure you hit that hard button tonight. And let's get started with number one of five ways to take control of your mind. Number one, and I must say number one must be the most difficult. And that is to do an assessment of your environment. Do an assessment of your environment. That is so important. I uh, shared with you last night how our environment impacts our thoughts. Our thoughts are impacted by everything around us, our life experiences, our life traumas, the good and the bad. And once we have these experiences, they form thoughts in our mind. And so since they're our thoughts, we believe that because they're our thoughts, that they're right. But if you listen to last night's uh, live, you know that that is not necessarily the case. We have an experience, we form the thoughts, and if we're not intentional on learning new things, which we know as humans, we are opposed to change. We'd rather have routine things that go wrong and wrong and wrong mm -hmm. rather than to be intentional and active to creating new change or new ideas in our mind. So now what do you think about uh, doing an assessment of an environment? Can you give us an example of what I could, what, what could help the listeners understand? What is a, a in your mind, when you hear me say an assessment of your environment, do an assessment of your environment, what does that mean when to you when you hear me say that? Um, call me off guard there. Uh, <laughs> all right. <laughs> an assessment uh, 
when I think of an assessment in general, I think of an overall commission or something like that. Okay, so an over, overall condition of the things that are, are around you or that surround you. Guys, let me tell you, our environment is one of the biggest things that hold us back. It's not that we don't think we can do a thing, but we get so distracted by the things around us. And let me tell you, when I say do an assessment of your environment, I mean, do an assessment of those people that you're having conversations with, the assessment of how much time you keep that electronic device in your face, playing games, on social media with friends, with non-productive things. I'm talking about the time we spend entertaining foolishness, things that does us no earthly good, the amount of time that we're spending watching, sitting on the couch, watching television. A lot of people laugh at me uh, that know me because that couch is my best friend. And so I spend a lot of time there, but it's not so much being there on the couch as it is what I'm doing while I'm on the couch. So if I'm using that time on the couch, being productive, and stimulating my mind with the good things, then that's a good day. That's good time spent on the couch. But if I'm sitting on the couch, using that time sleeping or strolling through social media, engaging in negative conversations of such, then that's not productive and it's not producing anything um, good of value into my mind or to my thoughts. So we know that to do an assessment of our environment, it's going to take being real with yourself. If you understand what I'm saying, go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that like button and be sure to share this video, guys. Because, because it's our environment, we're so accustomed to what's going on in that environment. Oftentimes, we're not doing a reasonable assessment and controlling what we are lying in. All right, that was number one. And, and remember, like I said, it's going to be the hardest to do. We have to get real with ourselves. We can't continue to uh, fool ourselves into thinking that uh, our environment is okay. Because a lot of times, when we really take the time to look at it, you can look at the last 24 hours. You can look at the last 12 hours. You can look at the last five hours. You have encountered something in that time that you could start to uh, do an assessment that it really didn't feed good thoughts or it's something that maybe you shouldn't have saw. Because we know that our senses take in everything and go to our mind. Thank you for joining us. Uh, I see you logging in. Thank you for liking and sharing this video and go ahead and send up some hearts. We're talking about five ways to take control of your mind or your thoughts tonight. And I'm glad you are here with me. Number two, <laughs> detox your friendships, courtships, and relationships. Rachel. <laughs> <laughs> detox your friendships, courtships, and relationships. Now guys, if you do the assessment, step one, if you actually do that, number two is gonna be a little easier for you. If you are reluctant and you lie to yourself in step one, then step two is gonna be a little more difficult for you. So it's going to be all up to you. All we can do is give you the information. It's up to you what you do with it. Okay? So when I say detox those relationships, those friendships, and those courtships, I mean just what it is. And sometimes that means just making minor changes. Other times it just means it's time to eliminate it altogether. 
you understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and hit that like button. Show me some hearts. Let me know that you understand how important it is that you do the assessment and then you do some detoxing. Because if you allow the same old relationships, courtships, and friendships to go along with you, they're not changing. You're the one that's changing. So that same old negative controlling uh, critical spirit that has been feeding you all this time is going to be the same old negative controlling spirit that's going to recontaminate your thoughts in your mind because they're going to be still thinking about the old and doing the old. It's you that are creating the change. Snow, uh, tell us a little bit about some things you can detox or people you can detox or <laughs> conversations you can detox in your mind. Well, thinking right. <laughs> what you're thinking right now. Well, my best friend Rachel just said that she said, hashtag, sorry, you're stuck with me. <laughs> so I kind of have no choice on that. <laughs> but I can say I can definitely understand like detoxing yourself because me and Rachel, we personally talk about this a lot. So we we've been friends for God three years now. And we've you know, she's been through a lot with me. I've been through a lot with her. And I know recently she was saying that she just felt like she had to separate herself from her close family because it was getting so toxic sometimes. Mm -hmm. And then it was just, she was just falling apart. So it's not saying that she doesn't love them or anything like that. It was just me. She just needed to step back and start doing more for her. So what she did, she did a career change and she's now a realtor and she loves her job. Awesome. So just because you have to pull back or you have to make changes, like I said, it, it, it doesn't necessarily make it permanent because when you're stronger in a, in a better mental state, you can go and reestablish those relationships and those courtships and those friendships so that's going to be important especially for you married ones out there we know that when we connect ourselves to a uh, partner or spouse uh, we can't always just throw in the, in the towel you know so as we grow and develop Oftentimes, we know that they're not growing and develop at the same level that we are. That doesn't mean that we throw them away. That just means that we may have to take some time to reevaluate how we're going to interact with them. We may not react the same way uh, to things that frustrates us or, uh, you know, we, we try to uh, regulate more of the conversations that are going on. Because like I said on last night, if you remember, just because we think it doesn't make it right or wrong. It just means that these are our thoughts and we just have to find other ways, healthier ways to cope and to manage and continue to press forward. But detoxing is necessary. If you like what I'm saying, go ahead and give me some hearts at this time. Uh, go ahead and make sure you like and share this video. We need this, guys. We're going through a tough time right now. We're in the house with our closest friends and loved ones. And, and now is just a time to pull together and be more intimate. And what a more awesome time to have a conversation on what we can do move to move forward forward in a more positive and healthier way. And it all begins with the thoughts that are going on in our head. This is the heart of man right here. This is what our actions follow. Our actions follow our mind. And we can say, oh, uh, it's just me and the girls and we hang out and we laugh and we make jokes and all of that but what if you're the butt of the joke that is not okay yes it's good to have fun and have laughs but it has to be in a healthy way to where you're you don't leave that setting or or hanging out with your friend and where you're feeling ah oh, was she taking a dig at me or you know just having that negative feeling feeling uh, less than who you are. 
that that's not good we don't want to have a conversation with our spouse and uh maybe they've taken digs or maybe the food wasn't as good or maybe he didn't work as hard uh so you know we don't want to take digs like that so we want to regulate those thoughts and have those filters to where we're not making or causing the others to feel less than so we have to detox those relationships some things said that need to be said just because we think it doesn't necessarily make it right or wrong okay all right so you, number three number three assume full responsibility for your thoughts and the actions that follow it's not time to play the blame game guys and this is often what we do. We want to impose the blame onto something else. Choices and consequences. <laughs> it's just you have to deal with it. It's just something you got to deal with. Yeah. Even though you think you made the right choice, it's still going to come with consequences either way. And, and you're so right. And I know you've heard that. So oh, I'll yeah. <laughs> My auntie, every time I walk the door, Snow White, choices and consequences. Thank you for welcoming me into your home <laughs> with that quote. <laughs> All right, guys, so we have to assume responsibility, full responsibility. We can't say, well, he made me do it. Or, well, he left his shirt on the floor, and so now I'm just, oh, it just made me angry, and I just said something that just, you know, no. Times for those days, it's done and over with, guys. We have to assume full responsibility for our thoughts and our actions that follow those thoughts. It's all about discipline, discipline, self-control. If you don't have it, now is the time to start practicing it. If you do steps one and two, three is going to come a little bit more easier. Okay? You, you have to go through the steps. You have to go through the steps. Go ahead and hit that heart button, guys. Let me know. Show me some love. Leave me a comment. Let me know that you understand exactly what I'm talking about. Leave me a heart. Let me know if it makes sense to you. Leave it in the comments. Leave, leave me yes. It makes sense. I mean, it's necessary. Th these are the steps that I've been going through for the uh, past uh, three years now. It's, it's, it's three years. It's a journey. And every day I have to assume responsibility for my own thoughts and the actions that follows. That's why a lot of times you'll see me get quiet. A lot of times I'm just quiet. I don't have anything to say until I can get my thoughts right. Because when words flow through my mouth, I need it to be positive. I need it to be healing. I need it to be uh produce life into that person that is receiving that. And, and there's sometimes that even without words, when that face or that attitude shows up, that's not necessarily right either. That's still communicating a message to the person that is receiving that. So I have to assume responsibility for my thoughts and the actions that follow my thoughts. So that may be uh, to say that I have to go back and apologize. And not because you made me do it. No, nobody can make you do anything. It's what you choose to do. We choose. And if you have someone that's in your environment that's causing undesirable reactions in you, then that just goes back to number one. Maybe we need to go back to step number one and just reassess it over again. And then go back to number two and do a little more detoxing. We may need to regulate the amount of time that we're allowing them in our space or regulate the conversations that we allow while they're in our space. It can be done without uh, hurting someone's feelings. It can be done without look like you're trying to control the situation all the time. Because 
only person that we can control is ourselves. And a lot of times if we're frustrated with somebody else, it's because we're trying to manipulate them and control them and conform them to our way. And not ever once can I ever remember in the word of life that it tells us to control somebody else. So when we stop trying to control other people and assume responsibility for our thoughts and our own actions, then we're going to be a lot less frustrated when we're interacting with uh, our loved ones. You understand what I'm saying? Go ahead and hit that uh, like button. We're talking tonight about five ways to control your mind and regain control of your thoughts. Number four, forgive yourself and be willing to commit to change. Now, I know some of you just said right now, I can do step one, two, and three, but number four, mm -mm. <laughs> forgive who? Forgive yourself. And this is where a lot of us miss it. But because before I knew better, I did a whole lot wrong. I said a whole lot of things wrong. I hurt a whole lot of people. I told a lot of lies. I lived a life of a lot of deceit. I had to forgive myself for all that. Because when you change and your mind change, everything around you begins to change. And let me tell you, when we change, you, you ever wonder about why when we say we, we are a change person, we, we change our hair, we change where we live, we change our phone number, we change our job, we change a lot of things. And oftentimes we find ourselves right back in the same situation. Why? Because we failed to change this. See, when we change this, it's not necessary to change a number. <laughs> It's not necessary to change your address, to change your hairstyle, to change your clothes, all that. All that doesn't mean anything when this change, because when this change, everything else around you is going to change. What'd you say? Your environment changes around you. Mm -hmm. It's, it's going to be commanded to change. Remember, I'm, our thoughts and our minds are subject to change. It's subject. We, we can command it to. We have that authority for ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves. We have to forgive ourselves and be willing to commit to the process. The process is not going to be easy. What I've done to recreate my mindset, it hasn't come easy. There has been storms in the midst of everything that I've attempted to do, everything that I've accomplished. The storms of life have come. Life is going to continue to happen no matter what. It's the principles of life. Life is going to continue. Life is happening around us right now, even as we speak. But we have to continue to stay focused, keep our mindset on a go. Remember that we move toward the things that we keep in front of us. You've had a situation that it just came. How has controlling your mind helped you make the necessary adjustments that you've had to deal with that's so fresh, even now? I mean, don't get me wrong, it did hurt. And because I feel like well, share with uh, what what what's happened as a result of so, this pandemic um, that we have going on. So most people know um, for two years, I worked two jobs trying to put myself through school. I finally got an opportunity to be at one job full time. Great benefits, good pay. Loved it. Uh, with everything going on, I got laid off on Thursday. I think it was yesterday. Got laid off on Thursday because I was one of the newer people that they hired. And it was just, it was a big shock because I've never been without a job since I've been out on my own. But I mean, 
don't get me wrong, I cried. <laughs> just an emotion I had. But at the end of the day, I just kept saying, like, God got me this job. I know he'll definitely give me another one, maybe even bigger or better. And he's not done with me yet. <laughs> All right. Go ahead and give her some hearts, guy. It take a lot of courage to share some intimate details of your life. Go ahead and send some hearts up for Snow uh, just for sharing that uh, insight. Also, go ahead and hit that like button, guys. Leave a comment in the comment section because we've all been there. I was a single parent for years. And there was a time when my children were young that I lost, uh, well, made a choice to uh, leave a job that I, I liked a, a lot. But I knew that within me, there were some changes that were being made. And I knew that being the person that I am, that I had a larger purpose to fulfill. So it, it, it hasn't been easy. So she, she's, she's watched her mom go through some very difficult times with very minimal income and maybe even cry sometimes or get depressed through it all. But being that I've changed, I didn't have a pity party with her. I didn't have a pity party with her. What did I say when, when you call and give me the news? What did I tell you? Don't worry about it. Don't worry about <laughs> it. And to do what? To keep your head up, keep smiling, keep just being you. God is not giving up on you. Oh, no. He, and you are more than welcome to come home. Come for home. A few days. That's right. Come on home. I mean, we can worry about all that other stuff later. Because, you know, no matter what goes on, God loves us. He loves us. And, and none of what is going on right now has caught him by surprise. I can promise you that. None of it. And so when difficulties come trying times come it's not time to resort back to familiar things because if we're committed to forgiving ourselves and moving forward then that's the, what we need to focus on just those things that are in front of us we are talking about five ways to uh, take control of your mind and your thoughts we are up to number five we are up to number five tonight, guys. I have enjoyed this with you tonight, and I hope that you have too. If you've enjoyed this with us tonight, go ahead and leave us a comment. Go ahead and hit those heart buttons because I have enjoyed being with you tonight. Number five, begin to embrace learning new things. Begin to learn to embrace learning new things. It's necessary. I told you last night how small minded we are. Our environment is so small and this is a huge big old world and there is so much of it to take in. And so many of us live this life and we die only getting to experience just a fraction of what this big old wide world has to offer. And so our mindsets are reduced to just our little old experiences. We never read. We never pick up the book to read, to learn new things. We never go outside our little small box or our little small community to experience new things. And so we're just limited. We're, we're just limited. How sad is it to live this life knowing that we haven't even touched the surface of what we could have had we learned to embrace learning and experiencing new things. That has always been important to me as a single parent. Single parent, yes, but not looking at that as a crutch and limiting my family on exploring a lot of what this world has to offer. There are cultures that if we continue to stay in our little box 
our little small mindsets that we'll never begin to taste the beauty of it all because we don't read because we don't go places and travel and explore those cultures or even turn the channel on our uh, electronic devices or our televisions to to discover those things thank you for joining us tonight i see some of you just logging on and i hope that you are enjoying this conversation with us i have a challenge for you tonight i've just went over five ways uh for you to take control of your thoughts take back that control i have a challenge for you tonight my challenge for you and, and this is dependent on you what you feel like that you are capable of doing take one to seven days you choose one to seven days how many days you want to commit to one to seven days but at least one full 24 hours i want to challenge you to eliminate content of negativity violent and or sexual behaviors that's my challenge for you you choose some of us are so critical to ourselves that we make it only do 24 hours do that some of us are a little more a uh, little more self-discipline i guess it's the word i'm looking for that we say well we can do five days some of us can do seven whatever you choose you choose it commit to it let's eliminate violence let's eliminate negativity and viewing or in uh, sexual content now, I'm not talking about you guys that are married and all that go fast from your husband or wife. I'm not talking about that. I'm talking about the things that we're taking in with these senses through our electronic devices and so on and so forth. So that's whatever we're watching on television. That's conversations with our friends, our loved ones, whatever. You with me? If you're gonna take this challenge with me, go ahead and leave it in the comments and say, I accept the challenge. In the comment section, tell me, I accept the challenge. And I wanna hear back from you. How many days are you gonna commit? At least 24 hours, one day. If you can do that and go through these steps, I can promise you, you're gonna feel a difference here you're gonna feel a difference here okay all right i appreciate you guys joining me tonight i have enjoyed you so much if you've enjoyed tonight go ahead and leave some hearts up go ahead and leave me a comment in the comment section i look forward to visiting with you again on tomorrow night tomorrow night we're gonna do a mental aa you know we always talk about going to aa meetings alcoholic anonymous well, today, I mean, tomorrow's uh, lesson, it's not an Alcoholics Anonymous, Anonymous, but it is Attitude Awareness. And that is what we're going to focus on tomorrow. Guys, I appreciate you taking out and sacrificing your time to join in me during uh, these night sessions. I have enjoyed it as I am here with you. It is helping me grow and be more aware of myself. Again. It's not over until I win, right? It's not over until I win. Say something too. What'd your shirt say? Oh, well, wrong way. <laughs> one dream, one mission. And yeah. <laughs> <laughs> one dream, one mission. So, so let, let's, let's use these steps. It's not enough to just sit here with me and, and, and not commit. Let's commit to the process, guys. It, it, it helped you. It'll help you. I promise it will. You guys have a good night. Thanks for joining us.